Long time no talk to. How have you been? Good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to talking to you about this EP because I love the fact that you guys are pouring so much into these songs and you can feel it on this end. Thank you. Yeah. Um, This new EP is going to be titled Trauma. And basically it's going to go through the uh, four trauma responses, which is fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. Um, But there's also going to be a fifth track called Remedy, uh, where you come to the end of all of your trauma and you accept that you have trauma, you've been through trauma, and you're going to continue to go through trauma. But in the end, it doesn't define you and you can get through it. So I am super excited for the release of this because this has been this is everything that i have to give i love the concept so now where did it start were you, were you watching a binge watch what what how did this all come into being um so we took a day i remember the four of us in our studio our basement studio area and we locked ourselves down there for like two days and we were like we were gonna write a bunch of songs just whatever comes to mind and then we're gonna start tracking and getting things together and there was a point where we were writing so many songs and we were looking at so many things and I had recently was going through, uh, I finally, for the first time in my life, I had seen a therapist. Um, Mental health was always taboo in my household. Mm -hmm. We didn't really talk about it. Um, Even though there were a lot of family members that did have mental health issues, um, we didn't very much talk about it. So I decided for the first time in the uh, 28 years that I've been on this earth that I needed to see a therapist because the band was getting hard, life was getting stressful. And I was recently diagnosed with CPTSD, which is Complex Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a stigma on it that only veterans or people that have fought in the army can have post-traumatic stress. But um, anything, really, if your brain is not wired a certain way and it latches on to what's called an event that happens, you can develop a post-traumatic stress disorder where it becomes complex. It's a lifelong thing of rewiring your brain and trying medications and going to therapy to try to um, get your triggers and your trauma under control so Mm -hmm. that you can live a normal everyday life. And I thought this needs to be talked about because I know we're always like, you know, mental health matters. It's okay to not be okay. I wanted to be like, you know, yeah, we have trauma, but it's not going to define us. Mm -hmm. This is how we, this is how we deal with it. But we can overcome it. We can get through this. So I wanted to encompass all of that, what comes with the trauma responses and the mental health that comes with it. Yeah. I love you for doing that. And the reason being is because I've been a daily writer because of the same issue. And and so I have to be able to identify my triggers. I have to under, understand that I'm not going to have good days every day and I shouldn't have the PTSD if something doesn't go right. And that's what maybe that's my attraction to this because you cover so much and and it really does describe the band even more than, you know, it it is that emotional journey. Well, thank you for saying that. It's, you know, I didn't quite realize how many people actually like suffered from post-traumatic stress until I actually came out and was like, hey, this is what I have. And it's like, it's very, it's not so much as very common, but a lot of people experience it. A lot of people can get over it and heal from it, but there are a lot of people that are kind of stuck in it. So to hear like people say, I have this too, this is what I do. i been kind of implementing that into my everyday life so that I too can get over this and uh, you know move forward and be the best musician that I can be. Yeah, before they started calling it the you know the, with those letters the PTSD and things like that, I, I always called it post production blues because we, you put so much into something and then something didn't go right in the, in the transitioning and all of a sudden you you you're down in a hole or you're fearing something you you're guilty. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to put it because, yeah, there are days where I'll have like a really good day and my brain will just be like, this is suspicious. Mm -hmm. We're not having a good day. Something is wrong. But when the reality, it's like, no, you're just having a good day. You're just anticipating this, like the fight or flight response all the time. And it's, you know, it's something that I've had to overcome and I've had to tell myself like on days, like be positive, be optimistic. You know, you aren't going to have good days. Nobody's going to have perfect days all the time, but it's especially difficult for people with the post-traumatic stress to 
to do that because our brains are wired to always be looking for trouble and be looking for the next thing that's going to like bring us down. So it's really, um, been a journey trying to uh, learn everything and try to keep myself out of that hole. Now, in a marketing way, are you going to take the photo for fight? And and, and even with every song, now that we know what each song is going to be about, talk about something that fans would want to get their hands on. Because when I see this photo for fight, right away, I'm thinking fight or flight, make the choice. Which one do you want? Yeah. So when we, it was ultimately when I was looking at this, I wanted for the viewers, I wanted a, what I call the stripped down version of me, which is the person that is going through the trauma response. And then I wanted what was, what's called a trauma demon. Mm -hmm. So the demon for fight is what you see. Um, And then in, with freeze, there's a completely different demon and it'd be the same thing with fawn and flight. There's going to be all these different like trauma demons that are trying to get you to fall into like their trauma trap. And then remedy is going to be the one where it's like, we're going to close the door on this. We're no longer going to allow these demons to come in and take over us. We are just going to be us, our, our, authentic version of ourselves we're going to embrace it and we're going to move forward so i am super that was like my whole thing with that i i wanted the viewers to have somebody to latch on to and be like oh this is me but this is the thing that's always lurking over me and trying to get me to like be in fight or fight or freeze or fun and i don't want to do that anymore i want to move on from that because trauma doesn't define me so that was a very important concept that i wanted um, the viewers to have. Because I grew up in the KISS generation, um, you know, not not being able to identify who they were, of course I'm charged up about the masks because it's like, ooh, there's a new mystery here and we're all going to stare at these photos. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I know for me, KISS is a great example. I know when we were looking at this, I got, I don't know what, like, I don't know what triggered us. I guess it was like, the rise of sleep token right now and that like just image of like nobody knows who you are is Mm -hmm. such like Mm -hmm. a great concept to have so we kind of lashed onto the sleep token thing like let's get masks for these trauma demons so you don't know that it's you audrey the singer and so i sent my my cousin she does my makeup for the videos i sent her the mask and i said hey here's the mask we need you to put together a look for the first trauma demon which is fight you know do your thing and she comes in we didn't tell her anything and she was like i'm sorry i'm gonna go vessel on this because this looks very vessel-esque and weird and demented and Mm -hmm. i want you to look weird and demented and i was like that's great i'm a demon so do it so she was very much inspired by sleep token we were very much inspired by sleep token because like i said we didn't want you to be like that's audrey the lead singer we wanted you to be like what is that (laughs) what is that thing that's lurking over essentially our lead singer that we haven't seen before so we wanted to be very ominous very just weird and twisted and demented you know what's really so close to this is the fact that you know that most people who suffer don't know the identity of their beast or their monster and this right here kind of gives us that little bit of a oh she gets it exactly and that is what i that is what i wanted to come across is that oh she also deals with this she also sees this other worldly being mm-hmm. that is tormenting her and I, I wanted that like i said earlier to be that dry poem it's like i understand what i i know what i'm going through but i understand that everybody probably has this trauma demon that's always over them that's telling them you're not good enough you're not going to make it you're not going to succeed you're going to work a nine to five and you're going to die and that's it there's <laughs> nothing else and i wanted to like give this culmination at the end to be like no you can tell that demon this is not what we're doing we're moving on and i understand that you're there you're in the background but you're not going to run my life mm-hmm. i'm going to run my life so i when once we reach the end to remedy it'll all culminate to that you will see that um we're going to shut the door on all the demons and be like you're here we understand that but we're done we're moving on yeah speaking of doors that red door in the video ooh, that makes a powerful statement right so i it was when i keep going to the songs because there's like three songs not released so remedy i say open up the door 
And our bass player, our, our latest bass player, Six, for some reason latched onto that and said, we got to do a door concept. Mm -hmm. We got to, I like this door. I see this red door in the middle of like hallways, in the middle of fields. And it's just like following us and we're going through different dimensions. And we were like, all right, dude, whatever, whatever you want. And then he went out on Facebook marketplace, found a door. Yeah. And someone was like, <laughs> what? They were like, take this door from me. So he's like, okay, I'll take the door. And he painted it red. And he was like, this is going to be the concept. It's going to be a red door. And I was like, uh, all right, dude, let's go. Let's run with it. Was it like making a mini movie? Yeah, you know, with with these with these different uh, like songs and everything. Yeah, it's almost like we're making little mini movies that yeah. you could watch in any order, and you'll get to all of the demons. So yeah, that's all. What, that's the kind of concept that we were going for. When we were working with uh, our videographer Akash Hans. We want this to be like a, a little, a small movie that you can watch continuously. Did you go through the door physically, or was this all with special effects? I went through that door physically. Ooh, you can, it's... you can open that door. <laughs> there was two people. I think it was Draven and uh, Six were on the ground holding the door up off screen like like literally flattened on the ground and akash was like open the door and go through it and mm. i was like aren't you gonna aren't you gonna see them and he's like no i'm gonna do some camera tricks he goes just open the door and go through it so yeah that's actually me going through the door yes wow yeah because it really does capture your imagination in fact in my notes here it says oh hell yes you went through the door <laughs> yeah and it was it's like it's so surreal because like when you're with all of the trauma stuff like going through it i felt like I'm like, when I'm going through, the, I'm going to another realm. I'm going to the next trauma demon. And it's just like, it sends chills. Cause you're like, I, I know what Akash is going to do with this. It's going to look so super cool. It's going to look like I'm going to another realm. So I was like very excited about it. Do you think that your fans at a live show are going to start bringing masks? I mean, look, look at what happened to Quiet Riot. Everybody was all <laughs> over that mask. I, you know, I, I hope so because that would be super cool or maybe in the future um people will eventually be able to obtain my masks but i would i would love for that i think that would be like super freaking cool if they did that where do you want people to go to buy your merchandise because that to me is the most important thing i like seeing west coast east coast stuff on the opposite coast so we have, if you go to our Facebook page, we have a link tree. It's a big cartel. You can get all of our merch there. We have um, a lot of shirts in stock, but we also are now doing drop shipping, which is where we go through a third company so they can print everything for mm -hmm. us and send it out to you in any size that you would like, up to 5X, because I know a lot of our fans are like, you got 5X? Yes, we do. Go buy it. We've got T-shirts. We've got the new, uh, you can pre-order the new, EP right now, actually, Trauma. We've got sweatshirts, tank tops, anything you want, any size you want, we got it. Go check out the big cartel. Are you guys going to be doing a, a tour as well? There is a tour in the works right now at the end of October to early November, but the routing is still being worked out right now. And the big thing anymore, especially here in the Carolinas, I mean, we're, we've gotten into the, the festival uh, attitude now. Are you going to be doing any festivals? So we just did a um, Monster Hall Music Fest nice. in Wisconsin. So we are starting to uh, branch out into the festival scene. So we might get to some more this year. If not, we will definitely get to more next year. What is that like for a band to go to a festival like that? Because, I mean, the roadies have got to be moving quickly. I mean, you guys have got to be on your game the very second you hit that stage. Oh, yeah. So with... Um, because the only fest we have under this name is Monster Hall. What Monster Hall did is kind of what uh, Sonic Boom did, uh, where it was one band is playing while the other band is setting up. Nice. So we were we were the first band on the second stage, so we were able to like kind of take our time and get things set up and get things prepared. But I mean, yeah, once you hit those festival grounds, you gotta know where you're at, where you gotta go, you gotta have the roadies ready to go there or like get people to do it you gotta like go 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 but luckily because we're mainly um all in-house with our in-ears we don't have too much of equipment but that might be a curse because now that we don't have a lot of equipment uh our drummer and our bass player are kind of like we should do stage setup stuff so 
<laughs> we'll we'll see. <laughs> Man, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I love talking with you because I love your passion. Thank you so much. I love being on here too. You, you were just the energy, just the questions that you ask is very engaging and it gets a lot of information out. So I do love being on here. Excellent. Well, you be brilliant today. Okay. You too. Thank you.